Hello everyone. So, as I'm working on the upcoming video on the Challenger from the main channel, I came across this picture, which is interesting for a few reasons that I want to share with you. What you're seeing is a repair workshop of the 22nd Armored Brigade in uh, Normandy in 1944. And you're seeing a number of Cromwell tanks in various states of repair. But the one in the, the foreground is interesting because it has a MG42, a German machine gun, uh, on the top of the turret. And it's not just any MG42, it actually has the, uh, the anti-air sights on it as well. That's the um, sort of the spiderweb looking uh, sight. Uh, and this is uh, interesting primarily for two reasons that I want to go over. So the first has to do with the um, tank machine guns, in, uh, air defense machine guns, and then specifically the British use or sort of the lack of use of uh, anti-air tank machine guns. So with a lot of other armies of, at the time, so you have the, the Americans, for example, quite famously used the, uh, the Browning 50 caliber mounted on the turret to be used by the commander. Uh, you see a similar type of caliber being used by the Soviet army on some of their later tanks as well. And the Germans, they use typically MG34s also for the commander to use uh, on the top of the turret. And they can be used against ground targets, but they are intended primarily for air targets. So they have a usually a 360 degree traverse and then a fairly high elevation as well. So you can uh, fire at, maybe deter uh, enemy ground attackers that are strafing your tank column. But you don't really see those on British tanks. The, um, now they, they did have them at the start of the war. And that's the, um, the PLM stands for the Parish Lakeman Mounting. That is a notable example and I came across it as I was doing my research for the Challenger video. There's this very useful resource, a book by uh, Mr. P.M. Knight, Technical History of the Challenger. And in it he mentions that there was a early design demand for, a, uh, for one of those PLM mounting systems to give the Challenger a uh, a mounting system for an air defense setup. Specifically, he uh, quotes, for a double Vickers K setup. Now the Vickers K is a machine gun you don't really hear a lot about usually. It is, it looks a bit similar to the Bren gun. It has a higher rate of fire. And that is why it was originally used by the, by the Royal Air Force as a, uh, like a rear gunner uh, weapon. That's what it saw uh, use as originally. And then later it was also adopted for ground use because the Air Force, they started using American Browning machine guns more and more. So those Vickers, they were in limited production. The ones that they had made were given to the ground forces and they were used quite famously by the, um, the long range desert patrols, those Jeep patrols in North Africa. Uh, so they started using a double setup of those Vickers K machine guns, firing a 303 by the way, so it's a regular uh, British surface cartridge, the same as uh, was used on the Bren gun. And so those were also intended for use on the Challenger on that uh, Parrish Lakeman mounting system. So there will be two of them side by side to be used by the commander with a fairly high traverse. And yeah, so having a double setup with a fairly high rate of fire and they had these uh, larger capacity pen magazines, those sort of record player uh, magazines on the top of them. Uh, would give you some deterrence against uh, strafing aircraft. Um, so those are the Vickers case. There just weren't enough of them, so it wasn't eventually picked up on the Challenger. You do see some early Cromwells driving around with those PLM systems as well, but you never see them in any pictures on like Normandy or actual use. It's only the, the very first production Cromwells and they're showing them around. Then you sometimes see a PLM, PLM system on them, but they weren't actually taken into combat. Um, and even by the time they started mounting those POMs, they were intending them to be uh, mounting Bren guns. So no longer the Vickers, just the regular old Bren, also firing the same 303 cartridge. You would still have the dual setup and you would have the, uh, the, the larger pen magazines instead of the, um, the typical curved magazine that you would see in the infantry. Uh, so that's already a change, but then in the end it didn't really matter because no tank would really mount any uh, sort of air defense uh, mounting system anyway. 
you do still see Brennan guns being carried in British tanks. So the, um, for the Challenger, there are uh, sketches of the, uh, the internals, so how the stowage arrangement was made. And they actually reserved a little bit of space for a Brennan gun next to the Commander, as well as uh, room for some of those larger pen magazines. Uh, but they no longer had a turret mounting point form, so instead you could still use them in an air defense role, but you would have to pick it up and then just from the shoulder sort of free aim it at an aircraft. But typically they were used as uh, more of a self-defense weapon, so if you had to dismount you could take it with you. If you were disabled you could use it as like a last ditch uh, defense. Or maybe at night, if you had to uh, guard your tank, you could have someone dismount with the Bren gun and then set up like a security position a little bit away from the tank, maybe at like a crossroads or a hedgerow or whatever. Um, so that's one thing, is those uh, tanks continue to carry Bren guns with 303s, even though it wasn't their primary armament. So that's the, um, that's point one about the AA armament and well, the, um, the sort of the non-existence of them by the time of the uh, Normandy uh, invasion. So that makes it interesting that at least one Cromwell crew, as is evident from this picture, did seem, uh, yeah, think they were a bit lacking in that department and then compensated by capturing a German MG42 and then it's not really clear on the picture if they actually mounted it or if it's just sort of yeah, on top there. But uh, it does seem pretty clear that they did pick it up with the intent of using it as an air defense weapon just purely based on its position on top of the turret and then the, uh, the AA side on it as well. But this brings us to the, uh, the second point which has to do with the ammunition supply and that's why I've written it out. So the, um, the funny thing here is of course the, uh, the German MG42 fires the German rifle cartridge that's a uh, 7.92 by 57 millimeter cartridge which they also used in like their Mauser bolt actions and uh, such. However, here's the funny thing is that Cromwell uh, had Besa machine guns, which fired the exact same cartridge. So that's a little known fact. The, the British were actually manufacturing German rifle ammunition for their own use in the Besa tank machine guns. So the Besa is, um, you got like the, uh, the whole machine gunner and then the coax, which is in the turret next to the main gun. Those fire the German cartridge. Now the story behind that is that the Besa is actually a, uh, a Czech gun. So it was designed in Czechoslovakia in the 30s and then adopted by the British as a tank machine gun, which is a bit strange because it wasn't designed as a tank machine gun, nor was it particularly well suited as one, but the British thought it was good enough, so they adopted it in the late 30s. They tried to rechamber it into their own 303 rifle cartridge, which they used in the Bren gun and the Vickers and such. But it was a bit of a complicated process. Long story short, the 303 is a rimmed cartridge. It doesn't really work well with a belt-fed machine gun unless it is really made from the ground up for it. So it, it was a bit of an um, awkward conversion process. By this time the clock was kick, uh, ticking, so they just figured the Royal Armored Corps at their own separate procurement line anyway, so let's just adopt the Besa as it is and then st set up production for the ammunition for it. Would be easier than to uh, try and uh, convert it into 303. So that's how British tanks, so mainly Churchill's and Cromwell's, ended up with Besa's firing German rifle ammunition. So German ammunition, British produced, used in British tanks. Um, so that explains the, the picture also partly, is it actually made a lot of sense for this tank crew to pick up a German MG42 because unlike a lot of captured weapons you don't have to keep capturing ammunition for it because you're being supplied by your own side with the ammunition. So it's actually very convenient to just pick up German machine guns if you can find them. And it also works the other way around. If you're cut off from your own supply and you can no longer keep your base house running well, you can capture German machine gun ammunition and then just feed it into your base house. So it's, um, you don't see it often, but it's uh, one of the rare examples of a um, yeah, sort of interchangeability between two uh, combatants. The one thing you couldn't uh, change was the belt. So the base had its own ammunition belt, which was separate from the, um, the MG42, MG34 belts. So if you captured German stocks and they were already belted, then you would have to do a lengthy process of peeling them out and then putting them in the base on belts or the other way around. But uh, it is something. So in the end, 
uh, what we end up with is these um, British tank units. Some of them actually carry three different types of rifle ammunition, which is inconvenient to say the least. So, um, because I'm researching the Challenger, the um, Armored Reconnaissance Regiment is where you would find most Challengers, and they were mixed with the, mixed with the Cromwells there, so like the cruiser unit. They would have three different types of rifle ammo, so like I said, they still carried the Bren gun with them in stowage for uh, emergency use. That's 303. Then they had the Besa firing the German-made 792 ammunition. And then the Challenger, it's a British design tank, it is a development of the Cromwell, but they just couldn't fit the Besa in because the Besa takes up quite a bit of internal space. Like I said, it wasn't really purpose-built as a tank machine gun. And the Challenger, already having to mount this massive 17-pounder, just didn't have room for one of those uh, bulky Besa machine guns. So they just decided to put an American Browning M1919 in there. Now the British were already familiar with them, they used them in aircraft, and of course the land leased Lee and Sherman tanks came with those Brownings. And there was actually a time that the British considered just completely ditching the Besa and standardizing on the Browning. So we would have Churchills and Cromwells with Brownings. They didn't go through with it. So that's what led to this awkward triad of uh, rifle ammo. So the Challenger mounting its single Browning M1919A4 coaxial in the coaxially in the turret would then add a 3006, so 30 caliber American ammunition. So a British armored reconnaissance regiment would have three types of rifle ammunition without any special need for them. It wasn't that any of these cartridges did anything better than the other. It really was just a uh, bit of a uh, result of a fairly convoluted convoluted procurement system that in the end led to this uh, split and I'm sure it was a nightmare for the uh, logistics uh, people to deal with. But um, you fight the wars with the equipment you have. So um, yeah, that's uh, some interesting points to make from um, this one uh, picture and a bit of a preview for the, uh, the Challenger video I'm working on as well. So thank you all for watching.